we're going to introduce in this video is the router table. Now in the past, you've seen me work with this trim router, which I made a special adapter plate for, for doing the artistic carving. This is very good for the very small bits, but when you start dealing with larger bits, you really need to have a bigger router, and the router needs to be mounted in a table for safety. As you can see from this angle, the router itself is mounted upside down underneath the router table. The router bit comes up through this hole in the table and you can adjust its height by releasing a clamp on the router and then turning a screw underneath to raise it or lower the router bit. This particular router table also has a little T-handle tool here that I can put in there and make it a little bit easier to raise and lower it. There's a lot of different ways to use a router table. Uh, if you're cutting a profile edge against a straight piece of wood, you'll want to use this fence. And the way that you do that is you get the fence so that you take a straight edge and you put it right against that, the bearing on that uh, router bit and then you tighten it down like that. So when you run the, your board across here, this bearing will be at exactly the same position as the fence here and it'll, everything will feed across very smoothly as you go across and it will cut whatever pattern this bit has. And there are many different kinds of bits. The particular bit that we're going to be using on this project is called a cove bit because it's going to cut a the opposite shape from whatever this is right here. Now if I wanted to just get a rounded edge on something I would use this bit uh, which when it passes over it will cut away and leave a rounded over. It's the exact opposite of that bit. If I want to do something a little bit fancier I'd get this Roman OG bit and if you look at it real closely there you can see it's a very nice profile and I like to put this on the edge of drawers and things like that. Now in this project we can't really use the fence the way I would describe it before because we're not just doing this cove cut on this edge, on the straight edges, we're also going to be doing it on this rounded uh, cutout right here. So we won't be able to use it that way. So I'm just going to push the fence back. Now the the fence does also have a dust collection port right here, which is very handy because this, these bits can throw a tremendous amount of dust. What we're going to do is we're just going to run on this bearing right here against the edge of the wood. The first thing we have to do is set the height correctly, and to do that I'm going to take my sample piece that I've already cut the way I want it, I did some experimentation to get the exact depth that I wanted and I'm going to put that there and then I'm going to set the height to match that. And as you can see that bit sticking way too high up in the air. So I'm just going to back it down until it matches that sample. That's about right. All we're, all we're actually doing is putting a decorative edge on that piece of wood there, so it doesn't have to be exact here. And if it's a little bit too high up, all that will happen is that you'll get a little bit of straight section coming down from here, and that looks fine too, no problem at all. Alright, so we're all set up. Let's get the dust collector hooked up. Needless to say, with the blade sticking up like this and me messing around with the height of it and everything, this thing has to be unplugged when you're doing that kind of thing. So even if it gets switched on, nothing happens. So, but now we're ready to actually get started. So I'm going to plug it in. One thing I have to remember is which way this, this blade turns. So I actually drew an arrow on here to remind me that this blade is spinning around this direction like this. The reason that's important is that you have to feed into the cutting edge of the blade. So I put a sign here, because if I feed this way, it's going to jump all over the place. I have to feed from this side going this way. 
And again, when the router cuts into the wood here, this part is above. So you can see this, this, uh, the wood will ride on this bearing and whatever the shape of this wood is, it'll cut out that shape. And that's one reason it was very important that we get the inside of these cutouts very smooth because otherwise it would this bearing would follow every little bump inside that cutout and it'd be a very ugly piece of work now when we're doing this unfortunately i can't see what i'm doing i've got to turn my work upside down good side down and go across there and go around these corners and, and feed it and I don't like doing that because I like to see what I'm doing. I'm spoiled from using that uh, trim router. I'm just going to take a scrap of wood and make a couple of practice cuts with it. So vacuum on, safety glasses on, and keep my hands out of the way. Now one thing I forgot to mention is we're cutting a lot of wood out there at one time. So you can't get in any kind of hurry when you're doing this cut. The other thing is that unless your bit is very sharp, you're likely to get some roughness, some chatter, and uh, maybe a little bit of splintering. So when you get down to the end of the wood, you got to really slow down to make sure you don't splinter out on the end. Also, don't try to make your cut all in one pass. Uh, go ahead let the bit cut into it as it's going around the piece of wood and then uh, go back over it again. You'll get a really nice smooth finish when you do that. So you'll see that in a moment. So now we're ready to roll. Got my hearing protection. Turn my project upside down. Turn on the vacuum. Turn on the router and away we go. Stop there so you can see where I'm at. Here you see I didn't cut very deeply. It looks like it's going to go a little bit deeper than I wanted to right here. Nothing I can do about that now. Uh, I'll just have to move this line in a little bit right here to compensate for that to get the same width of uh, border there because it's, it's going to ride on this edge of the wood there regardless. As you can see, I have plenty of sawdust everywhere because the vacuum could not catch all of it. But hey, it's a wood shop, so there's going to be sawdust. Now we got our cove cut made all the way around here. And looks like it, what really happened here, it, it looks like it cut a little too deeply over here and not quite deeply enough over here. Reality, I probably did not get the pattern on the wood exactly straight. So. I'll have to tidy up the lines a little bit to make sure they run parallel to the edge here because that's what I, really what I want. But I have a nice clean cove cut all the way around. I took about three passes to make it 
and make sure everything's nice and smooth. Uh, the only roughness is in the end grain right here on the wood and that's always going to be rough so just going to take a little bit of sanding so two or three minutes with a piece of sandpaper and we'll be good to go for the next step.